Hi, beautifuls. Welcome back to my channel. Now, ever since I've been active in YouTube for the past months, you guys have been asking me very amazing questions. And one of those questions was about my move to Australia. So it's been three years now. It's my third year anniversary. I survived. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> and I have had this idea of creating a stream in my YouTube channel about international migration and life in Australia, which I currently have been working on. And what a great way to start that stream with sharing to you guys my story of how I moved to Australia. Now, I'm really going to try to make this video as interactive as possible. I initially planned it to be like a mukbang or something exciting, maybe probably a makeup video, but I just wanted to take time and sit down with you guys to tell you my story. And I feel like a lot of people need to hear this because I've received tons of questions about like, hey, how did you move to Australia? Or what's the process? Or everything related to migrating and I am not affiliated to any migration agency. What I can tell you though, is I can tell you my experience of me moving to Australia. So sit back, relax, and let's talk. If you think about it, three years is quite a long time. For some people, it feels like it's a lifetime. <laughs> Back in the Philippines, I was working as a financial advisor in an insurance company. I was part of the sales force. And basically, I would like to believe I had a good life. My life was quite comfortable back then. I'm not saying I was a millionaire. Oh, how I wish I was. But it was comfortable. I could afford to travel. I could afford to go out. I could afford to eat out. I could afford to buy stuff for me and my family. So it was really a good livelihood. And at that time, I remembered my manager trying to push me to become the next manager. So I was like the grooming. There was a grooming situation. So I'd like to believe it was really good. But good will not necessarily mean it's right. So I took the time to think about what I really wanted in life and took the time to really think about where I was heading career-wise. And something hit me and I realized, oh, this is probably not what I want to do or what I see doing in the next 50 years of my life. It was more of like I went through a quarter life crisis. And if you've seen my previous video, my coming out video, that was also a part of why I moved to Australia was because of that. But also a part of me moving to Australia was because I really wanted to test myself and challenge my limits and expand my horizon in terms of career growth. So I really went through this quarter life crisis and I'm like, where do I want to be in the next 10, 15, 20 years, or even 30 years? At that time, I felt like I was stuck. I felt like I was not accomplishing anything. I felt like, oh my God, I've lived for this long and have not accomplished anything great, like something I could really be proud of. It was so, like, looking at it now, I'm like, oh my God, I really went through that? <laughs> <laughs> I also felt like my perception and my mentality of certain situations did not fit the culture and the environment I was placed in. So the whole point was I felt like I was stuck. And it was all the factors that made me realize I had to move out of this city that I grew up in. And some people might be scared to do that because, you know, it's a big thing. But then you realize the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. So I decided to move. And initially it was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna move out to another country or move out to Manila, the capital of the Philippines, or maybe move to Indonesia or Thailand or Hong Kong or Singapore, just to find opportunities there. So I did, I did my research and way back 2013 or 2012, the first time I came to Australia, I really wanted to come back. And in fact, I'm gonna tell you this, and this is like a secret. The very first time I came to Australia, I told myself that I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna stay. Oh my God, I have chills saying that. It's true though. So then I took the time to create a list of all the agencies in the area and looking for who can really help me to move outside of the country. And I bumped into this agency called AECC Global and realizing that a friend who went to the same uni as I did also worked there. Shout out to Carlo. He helped me throughout all the processing and the visa situation, which can be very stressful. So. I think one of the advantages of going through an agency with the student visa processing is that they have more contacts than you do and they do have a link to the university so they have contact people in the university that you want to apply to and it's there's like a relationship with the universities and the agencies. First counseling session was kind of interesting because we really had to go through what were the options and what needed to be done or what is possible for me and what are my goals. So I then decided to take my double masters in property development and project management. But I then eventually realized throughout the counseling session and throughout the process that property development is something that I am new to. It's real estate. 
it's a built environment. But in the Philippines, when you say the word means you sell property, when you say real estate in Australia, it's just the whole thing. It's not just you sell it. It's not just you do the sales or market the product. It's really about the whole process. So my master's was in the built environment industry and it has something to do with construction. I wasn't so confident with the built environment, but I was just like, fine, I'm just gonna have to get through this. I'm just gonna study hard, really hard. <laughs> and then we went to process the visa, the enrollment confirmation, and all of the requirements that is needed, including the medical and the IELTS. I'm really gonna talk about the IELTS situation here because I feel like this has to be addressed there is an issue here and I'm gonna pinpoint the issue of the IL. I'm not saying it's all that bad, but I'm saying that there is a level of difference when it comes to assessing IELTS in the Philippines compared to Australia. So I have to admit that I took the IELTS twice. The first one, I had really high grades except for writing. And the reason behind that is that IELTS has a structure when you write your essays. If you don't follow that process or that outline in writing your essay, then you're not gonna have a high grade. Which which is fair enough because there's a standard on how you write essays, I do agree, but agencies have told me that IELTS in the Philippines, they don't really give you a 8 or a 9. And that is just really ridiculous because number one, being a Filipino, English is not your native language. Number two, just because you speak English, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're smart or you have an idea that is worth a million. Just because you speak English, it doesn't mean you're above anyone else. I feel like in the Philippines, we have a culture that if you really speak good English, then you're posh. If you really speak good English or if you communicate well in English, you're smart, you're intellectual. You can have intellectual conversations even if you don't speak English. And I feel like that is a cultural issue that people have to address, not just in the Philippines, but in any country who thinks that English is like a powerful language. And why I'm saying that is because I else, I feel like, and this is my personal opinion, hopefully I don't get in trouble by saying this, is that it carried the culture to the IELTS assessment program. The fact that IELTS won't give you a really high grade or close to perfect when you're very fluent, you can communicate in English, you can hear in English, you can understand and you can talk and you can write in English, it's just unfair. Because if that exam was taken here in Australia, then I am pretty sure that it's gonna be really good. Because Australians understand that you as an international student, your first native language is not English. Hopefully IELTS, you can hear this. There's so many international students who don't speak fluent English that are super smart, super intellectual, and super good. This stage in the processing was really interesting because when I failed my first IELTS exam, well, not really completely failed, when I didn't make the cut of my first IELTS exam, I said, if I don't make it in my next exam, then Australia is not for me. So I said, okay, I'm gonna study hard. I'm gonna give it my best. And if it's for me, it's for me. And at this stage when I was gonna take the second IELTS test, I already had the confirmation from the University of Technology Sydney that they accepted me. So I already had an offer, but I couldn't proceed with it because I didn't have an IELTS exam. So it was on hold. So it was just a really intense, stressful situation when you're waiting for your IELTS exam. You already had an offer and the only thing you need is this exam. Amazingly, I passed the IELTS exam and I took it as a sign that Australia is really for me. From that point on, everything just started to roll and roll and roll. So it was like, we submitted the offer, the university came back, the Department of Home Affairs Australia came back, you got your visa, and then you buy the ticket. And this was so funny because I bought the ticket two weeks before I had to fly. <laughs> it was such an expensive ticket. It kind of feels really emotional when you say you're packing your whole life in three bags, literally three bags. So I took the plane and it was a long flight from the Philippines to Sydney. And what amazed me is that for some particular reason, when I fly by myself, I always end up making friends. <laughs> and there's this girl, her name is Laverne. Hi Laverne, if you're watching this video, love ya. We had nine hours in the plane and we just talked most of the time. She told me about life in Australia. She also speaks the dialect that I do, so it was not so hard to really talk to her and like have that humor. She told me that the cheapest thing you could buy in Sydney is milk. Water is even expensive. Milk is so much cheaper. And then all I could remember after that was the pilot announcing that we were 
nearing Sydney or we were just hovering over Sydney and he asked us to open the windows and the moment I opened my windows the first thing I saw was the Sydney Opera House and that was a really emotional moment for me when I saw the Sydney Opera House and I told the bird I'm here my new home <laughs> it was very emotional it was very um exciting i just felt a rush of emotions when i saw the opera house and i just felt like i'm home what's more interesting is that i didn't have any family here i only have less than a handful of people that i know i didn't have a place to stay when i first arrived so i stayed in a hostel for a few days while i was looking for a property and it was just an interesting time i remember when i arrived went down the airport i was in an ecstatic mood and was like yes i'm gonna conquer the world yes i'm gonna do this and i'm just gonna be the best best that i can ever be and then when i went out it started to rain so bad it was like a movie like, it was just rough from the moment i arrived in australia outside the airport is another story which i will do in my future vlogs there's just so many amazing things that happened over the past three years that it's really hard to contain it three years a lot of things can happen and once you give up your life and just start new, start afresh, then, you, then the possibilities are just so endless. If there's one takeaway that I hope you would grab in this cute little chat moment is that you only have one life to live, so make the most out of it. I moved to Australia because I wanted to test how far I could go, like Moana or like Elsa, into the unknown, right? <laughs> I really wanted to test my boundaries and test my limits and so far, it's been going good. I'd like to believe so. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will make videos like this in the near future. Also helping people who would want to migrate to Australia to share my story and to share my thoughts and to share any tips or help or anything of the like in terms of the lifestyle and living here and being a student here and just taking your life to the next level. That is all for today's video. I really hope you had some insights throughout this blabbering moment. And don't forget, keep your gold shining.